So I have that backer dry fit into place and I knew before I started this that that door wasn't going to yield enough material to do the whole thing. This is about the gap I have. It's about four inches and I thought I could just piece together some of that other bead board but it just doesn't look right with the thinner beads right in the middle of everything. So what I'm going to do is I have a piece of wood. You can kind of see it through the crack. Um, on my table saw that is the same sort of lumber as this and I'm going to strip it down and then cut a bead onto it similar to what is already on there and then attach it and see how that looks. Now while I'm waiting for that I'm going to go through and start attaching from the right hand side all of these to the rabbits on the top to the shelf and then as well as the top so that when I get to this end I could sneak in that panel I make and then since this one on the end is just rabbited into place I could pop those last two pieces in. Here's that piece of wood I have stripped down, and it's not a perfect match. And I didn't think it was going to be, but I think it will be close enough that once I put the tongue and the groove and the beading on it, and then eventually polyurethane everything, it won't look super bad. So the first thing I'm going to do is recreate this tongue that's on the one side, and then I'm going to put this beading on it. After that, I can measure it against what I have up there already, rip it to width and then add a groove. So I'm going to set up my table saw. I'm basically just going to measure this. This should be in the center and I'll cut it. So there's the little groove I cut. And this lumber is actually about an eighth of an inch thicker than the lumber I'm using. So the back side, I cut a little bit deeper to get that quarter inch tongue in there. And it will just be a little proud on the back side of the cabinet, which won't matter. So now I'm going to set the blade to cut off these little flanges. So after I cut that tongue, I took a scrap piece of this um, beaded board and test fit it to make sure that it fits and it does. So now I can cut the bead on one side of the front of this and then fit it into place. So I lowered my blade and set my fence and all I'm doing is using this other piece I have left over and gauging it the height and the distance off of my fence, setting it and then copying it onto the new piece. There's that finished bead, and all I did after I cut that groove down the front was I just took a plane on this edge and then a sharp rasp on this edge and curved that over and finished the whole thing off with sandpaper. So now I'm going to mount my one edge back into place and take some measurements. I'll be able to rip this down, add that uh, groove on the inside, and this should fit into place. I have that corner propped up and my piece propped up and I lined it up so that that tongue hits where it would go and then I just marked up to the bead on this side because you need that hidden depth to fit over the tongue on this side. So you're actually going pat, don't measure to the edge of the tongue, measure to the bead. I put a mark, I could rip this down, cut a tongue which is going to be a quarter inch tongue and then um, 
cut the dados and rabbits in this and mount it into place. So on the wood that's about three quarter, that groove is three is one quarter and then there's one quarter on either side. Since mine's a little thicker, I'm going to have a little thicker bit in the back, a one quarter inch groove and then a quarter inch in the front. And I got these marks by just placing the old beadboard against it and marking the groove off of that. There's that finished piece with the groove. And then I'm using this piece that um, still needs to go into place to gauge the rabbit. I just lined it up, lined it up and marked where the rabbit and the dados go. I actually still have the stock in place I used this afternoon, so that will help with the dado. And this is cut to length. And then I used the old piece to reset the depth of my blade. So I could cut the rabbit and the dado and hopefully all this fits into place. A couple things off camera for this. Uh, this is the base, it's actually upside down and I added this little half inch piece of ply in there and that's just because with the dado in this bead board um, it gets a little thin right about here and if you were to move this around and knock one of these edges it would probably snap right off. So this is just kind of like a protector to keep this whole thing in line. I did that on both sides and then I took a flush trim bit and I flush trimmed this backer flush to the bottom. If you have um, a lip here it's only ever just going to get caught on stuff. So now it's flush. I'm going to turn this on its front and add the molding around the bottom of this before I reassemble this for the day. For my base molding I have to be careful because I didn't leave myself a ton of width there to work with, especially since there's going to be doors there. You don't want your molding to butt up right to the bottom edge of your door. So I have this kind of odd shaped molding. I actually believe it is window molding. It's curved on top, has a little bit of detail in the front here. Um, a few years ago they were tearing down the offices down by the church a couple streets over and you were allowed to go in there and kind of pilferage what you wanted before they tore it down and I got a bunch of really cool old molding. It has this curved top. I don't really want that. I want a flat back. I kind of scraped the bottom so it's flat and I can run it on my table saw. I'm pretty much going to cut this right in half and then see how that... I'm going to have to... I'm kind of at my wits end with stripping uh, pieces of wood for this, but I think I'm going to have to take this paint off as well before I attach it to the base. The thing about old materials that I'm always kind of amazed about, and it's been like this through the entire project, is this is a piece of molding off of a pretty old house, and it's been sitting in my garage probably for three years. And I mean, it's still straight as an arrow. You can't even go to the store and find stuff off the shelf as straight as this. So I put this back together after putting on that base molding. And I still have to do the top molding, but I'm stripping a piece of molding for that. So now I'm going to focus on the doors. And the doors in the original photo are inset doors. I don't love inset doors in general just because while they're not super difficult to make and you could fit them into your face frame, um, if the reveal around the edges of those inset doors is off by a little bit, it's just super visible. And it's one of those things I think that you can fit in place at the time. But down the line, um, any sort of wood movement or movement with the piece of furniture, those reveals are going to get thrown off and they just don't look good at that point. Not only that, but I don't really think, I feel like inset doors are somewhat contemporary 
and I just prefer the look of partial overlay doors on um, reclaimed sort of furniture like this. It just suits it a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to be making on these. I'm not going to be making full overlay. I don't really think those would fit either. I'm going to be making partial overlay doors. So I found my halfway point. I added three-eighths of an inch to my measurements on this side, the top and the bottom and the middle. I don't have to because there's no partition. And I'm going to start making those. I'm not going to um, describe a ton of it while I'm... I'm going to do a little bit of filming. I'm not going to be describing it in detail because I already have a video on my channel of how to make partial partial inset or partial overlay doors. So the thought of stripping down any more lumber for this project makes me want to gouge my eyes out so I'm reusing these strips left over from that pink panel door to make the doors on the hall tree. So I'm going to be ripping them into strips. I'm going to try and keep at least one side of the bead as a detail and for the inset in these doors I'm going to be using this old tin instead of wood so I'm going to have to play around with the size openings for the grooves I'm going to be making but other than that that it's still pretty straightforward partial inset doors. like clockwork the weather turned to crap as soon as it was time for me to uh, start uh, finishing this so I kind of set it up in my shop and I'm able to put the finish on in there the only thing that is kind of um, a problem about that is then it, it's a little difficult to work on other projects that are going to produce sawdust if you have something drying in a shop like mine but I'm just gonna have to deal with that so for this, I'm just putting a clear coat on it because I like the look of the lumber and so does the customer. So I'm going to be putting probably three or four coats of semi-gloss polyurethane on there. And since this wood's really old and I pretty much got most of the paint off of it, I already put one coat um, all over the base and it just totally soaked it up. It's really going to soak it up, which is why I think I might have to go to four coats. And the shutters are the gift that keep on giving because clear coating these is also not fun because of all the louvers, but it'll look great in the end and stuff like that's worth the effort. So I just have a basic brush and I'm going to be coating all these parts. <laughs> 